the Colgate Comedy Hour. Starring Donald O'Connor. With his special guests, Corrine Calvay, Kay Starr, and Ben Blue. And Gwen Carter, Sid Miller, Frank Nelson. And now, the star of our show, Donald O'Connor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I want to say how wonderful it is to be back here with you on the... I want to... Who is that? I love the puss in that guy. It doesn't look like me at all. Anybody staying for the cartoon? <laughs> that doesn't look like me at all. I usually wear a hat. <laughs> I really... What are you smiling at? I do. I look good in a hat. You ever see me in a hat? Let's get a little of that profile. <laughs> Oh, you can do so many things with that. For instance, yeah, a twist of the band like this, a crease of the crown, a bend of the brim, and what do you got? The same thing. <laughs> but you can be so many different people with a hat. For instance, you wear your hat this way, you're thin people. <laughs> wear it this way, and you're fat people. Wear it this way, and they call you crazy. <laughs> but this is not important at all. This is not important, this hat. This is what is important. Thank you very much. This is what is important. You know what this is? This is a hat for my wife. In the spring, a young girl's fancy lightly turns to elegancy, and she starts in thinking of her clothes. Maidens of the poor are smart sets, definitely have their hearts set on the thrill of donning new chapeaus. Here's a scene you'll see most any spring. Boy meets girl, and he begins to sing. In that hat, you look so laudable, you are applaudable in that hat. In that hat, you look so smart and cheap, you really leave me weak in that hat. When we meet upon the street, you look so proud and gay, I mean it when I say, you take my breath away. In that hat, you could be kissed a lot, I can't resist a lot in that hat. Please say yes, let me caress that pretty little head you toss so pertly in that You could be kissed a lot, I can't resist a lot in that hat. Please say yes, let me caress that pretty little head you toss so pertly in that hat. How you feel? Oh, fit as a fiddle, sharp as a nail, right on time with the U.S. mail. <laughs> you asked me another. All right, how's the wife? In wife? Uh, talks all night, sleeps all day, gives me nothing, and takes my pay! Yeah! <laughs> you know you ought to have me on your television show, son. I'd really brighten it up a bit. I bet you would. Oh, yes. I didn't know I was in the show business, huh? No. Spent 20 years in the big time before I answered the cold Uncle Sam. No kidding. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, listen to this little gem. Did you ever stop to think that two pints make one cavort? <laughs> What do you say to that? You got any mail for me, Harvey? Uh, <laughs> magazine. Uh -huh. uh, few bills. Few bills. Uh, about 150... 75... 20... One fan letter. Oh, my fan mail's picking up, huh? Yes. Well, Better see. save your money, son. <laughs> well, thanks, Harvey. Well, I'll be back tomorrow morning with some brand new mail with the same old cord. <laughs> Oh, that boy loves life. He really does. Let's see now. Dear Donald, do you mind if I call you Mr. O'Connor? <laughs> I saw your last TV show and everybody on the farm thought it was a humdinger. You'll be glad to know we got the wheat in just before the frost, but the rain raised cane with the alfalfa. <laughs> 
Dad would like to know if you would be interested in investing some money in his invention. It's a new kind of milk separator. He is teaching the cows to sleep on their backs at night, so in the morning the cream will be on top. <laughs> Let us hear from you soon, as the cows can't stand this much longer. <laughs> Your loyal fan, Ephraim Dimsdale. Isn't that sweet? That's a one. Thank you very much, Mr. Dimsdale. Oh, P.S. Please pass this letter on to the 12 names beneath my signature, because bad luck will come to those who break the chain. <laughs> that, that's ridiculous. I can... What 12 people do I know? Well, well, why aren't you out playing with the rest of the children? Because I'm bored. Do you hear me? Bored, bored, bored! <laughs> <laughs> bored, bored, bored. Well, I don't blame you. I know life can be very depressing at times. What time is it, Daddy? What time? It's six o'clock. Why? I want to listen to my favorite radio program. Oh, Hop Along Cassidy? No, University Roundtable. I mustn't miss it. Tonight, Professor Einstein is discussing nuclear fission. <laughs> Unusual child. The other night I came home and caught a splitting an atom. Attention all farmers and growers. A cold wave is moving in from the northwest. We urge all farmers around El Centro to get the wheat in before the frost. In Bishop, the rain is raising cane with the alfalfa. <laughs> Turn that thing off, will you? Daddy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Luck. In time for <laughs> murder at midnight. Goody, goody, my favorite program. Dad, you promised Mommy you wouldn't listen to those things. But baby, it's my favorite program. Oh, how can you stand that it's infantile nonsense? How can I stand an infantile nonsense? I love it. Come here and let me tell you why. Right this way. <laughs> Sit right down here. And I'll explain the whole situation. Whenever I'm a little on the weary side, I like to turn the lights down low. And dig myself a little of the homicide, they send you on the radio. You know the type of show. Dark night, I knock at the door. Bang, bang, there's a body on the floor. Oh boy, I love a mystery. Two men are out in a boat. One guy has a dagger in his throat. Oh boy, I love a mystery. Murder, murder, on the air. Corpses, corpses, in your hair. Stranglers, gangsters, maniacs. Ah! It's so relaxing. New clue. Hanky a place. Ha ah, ah, ha, there's a woman in the case, but where? Where doth she roam? There's moaning, groaning, sirens bell, frantic, phoning, screeches yell. How oh, I love a mystery and a quiet evening at home. <laughs> 